a great drummer, and he's been a friend of mine. You know, did you set him up with that? Or I didn't. I set Guns N' Roses up with Buckethead. Okay. I introduced Buckethead okay. to them, and and it, we could do a whole separate podcast on Buckethead, man. Who is Buckethead? His name's Brian. <laughs> I, can, can I can I tell you something? When I when I tracked, were you down, laughing when people said it was Steve Vai? That just did you love that kind of stuff? I never heard that. I've heard rumors. I never heard that. But the other day I was working with a band in the studio and they were talking about Buckethead and I go, oh dude, I go, I've known Buckethead for over twenty years. They go, you do have. They went online. They were showing me pictures. Is this him? Uh, all these different pictures of guys. This might be Buckethead. I was like, nope, nope, nope. no. They no, finally no. found an ad that that he had posted like when he was sixteen, like in the Penny Saver or something like, a recycler like guitars for hire. There's a picture of him, but he, you can hardly see his face, and it's when he was 16, so it hardly looks like him. But every photo's like, no, that's not him. That's a tall guy with long hair. That's a tall guy with long hair, but those aren't Buckethead. When I finally retracked him down, I hadn't talked to him like in five years. The joke I had with Axel when I worked with him is no matter who he mentioned, I knew. Right? It, it became an ongoing joke. Right. He go, yeah, so my first girlfriend, Linda, that I met back in Indiana when I was, you know... 14 i'm like oh yeah i know linda like it it got that weird almost you know so he's like yeah sure okay dude you know everybody so when we when robin fink had left to rejoin nine inch nails we're looking for a guitar player and we had auditioned a few people and weren't really sure what we were gonna do and one day i walked into the studio and actually goes buckethead do you know him i go i've known him since 91 man he's like i knew it i knew you know him how do we get a hold of him? I'm like, oh, I haven't talked to him a while, but I, I, last I heard he was hanging up in San Francisco with the Primus crew. So let me call my buddy Dave, the manager's Primus, Dave Lefkowitz. So I called Dave and he's like, oh yeah, I see him around. So he got me his phone number. At first I was like, do you think Buckethead would even be into this? He's such a quirky, weird artiste. Like, Dave's like, yeah, I think I think he's tired of, of of the starving artist routine. I think he's ready to go like <laughs> he's ready make a living, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I talked to him at first. It's funny when I when I talked to Buckethead on the phone the first time. I was like, "Yeah, man." He goes, "They were asking about you the other day," and I was going, "I was going, shit, yeah, man. I I know Brian. I've known Brian since like '90, man. I've known Brian for a long time." And he goes, "Hey, uh, you uh, don't like uh, when you talk about me, you don't say like Brian this and Brian that, do you?" I'm like, "No." No, no, no. What did I say? Did I say I said no, no, no? I said Buckethead. And I'm like, holy shit, he's freaking out of me for for humanizing him too much. Because I kind of knew him as Brian too. Like when I first met him, I used to call him Brian and Bucket. Does he ever? Do... Now all of his friends call him. All his friends call him Bucket or Buckethead. They're like, oh yeah, Bucket this. Or Bucket I mean, without that. revealing his full. Does he? Does this guy ever do anything publicly? You know, without funny, the without the bucket, no. like. Never, 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 never. Probably, never. He walks around without the bucket. No, like, no, no. But I mean, he never. Like he doesn't go out to eat. With it's not like shit he's on. like the side man one night for someone sitting in on guitar, and just people are just like, "Who's no. that?" And if he is, I don't know about it, but uh, uh, okay. I would surprise. You. I highly doubt it. Like okay. I don't think he's ever like played guitar in front of anybody without all the shit on. You know. Okay. First time I met him, he was in a studio alone with my friend Warren, the guitar player in the Vandals, was producing him like in 1990 or 91. They were at a studio in Orange County. My friend Warren calls me, "Dude, you got to come down and meet this guy. He's a freak." He's incredible, incredible guitar player, lightning fast, weird funk slap stuff. He's like, he's like completely outshining Flea or any guy that does that sort of, you know, where I'm 18, something, and Flea's the greatest funk slap man. Sure, sure. You know, figure it out, dude, you got to check this dude out, man. He goes, he, wear, he, he moonwalks and he does martial arts and, and break dance shit, but he's, I'm like, what? Yeah. I'm up in LA at the time. I think he was up at Weasel's house at the time. And I'm like, that was kind of weird if I mentioned Tweezel for the first time. We were talking about Tweezel before we turned we, this we thing on. We discussed Tweezel's app earlier, folks. That was the Josh first record I made Weasel's app, when, yeah, I, was, when yeah. I was a kiddo. Anyways, I think it was up at Tweezel's house, and which is way up at the top of Laurel Canyon. And so I was like, oh, man, i got to come down and check this out. Oh, and Warren also told, tells me, he goes, this guy's really excited. Buckethead's really excited. He calls himself Buckethead, right? He's really excited to meet you. He's really impressed that you used to play drums at Disneyland. And so he's really excited about meeting you. Because he's a, he's a Disneyland freak. He's a Disneyland freak. So forget that you're the dude that plays in the Vandals and plays with Dweezil he Zappa. Wants to he doesn't be care about because, that. Yeah. He doesn't care about the Zappa connection. Did he, he, wants did to know he about... interview you about Disney? Did he? Kind of. He did. <laughs> I've got another funny story, man, about him and Disneyland that involves my dad and Axl Rose. Did you and go together? We didn't, no. But my dad, my dad, when I was a kid, conducted the Disneyland. This is great. This anyone, is great. anyone listening to this is going to go, man, Freeze makes U-turns every like 30 seconds. I just... Uh, I start a story, then I abandon it. I mention one name, then I make a fucking U-turn and just go somewhere else. I'll, I'll make this quick. My dad conducted the Disneyland band when I was right. a kid. And then for years, since I was about 10, he still does this gig, which is he hires, he's one of the guys that hires the music, the music out there. 
most musicians you see out there, he hires and fires uh, from the Latin bands, the big bands, the top 40 band, uh, the Dapper Dan Barbershop Quartet, you know. Anyways, so Buckethead was like, oh my God. Because when I was a kid, I, I played, my first gig was for, for three years, I played in a cover band every weekend out of Disneyland from when I was 12 to when I was 15. And uh, so Buckethead knew that, or Warren had told him that, and he's like, oh, oh, oh my God, it's my dream. My dream is to work out at Disneyland, you know, play guitar at Disneyland. And uh, so I came out and met him, and I was just tripping on But I came, it's just Warren and him alone <laughs> in the studio. It's like me and you hanging out right now in the studio, yeah. but I'm wearing a mask and a bucket, but it's just me and you. He never took it off. Well, he did like when we went out to eat, but while we're sitting in the room, while he's playing guitar, he's wearing the shit. <laughs> it's just us, like at 9 p.m. on a Tuesday night, alone in this little dingy, crappy studio in Orange County. And the guy's wearing all this stuff, and we're like, wow, this guy is a trip. I should find the videotape, man. I got a videotape somewhere, me videotaping him doing like like all these robot moves and stuff in the studio it's so crazy so anyways I didn't see Buckethead for for years uh, up until I kind of uh, reconnected with him for for the uh, the Guns N' Roses thing oh but I might be skipping something else though you were asking about yeah he, yeah he wears the shit yeah he wears it all when he plays but when he doesn't play he, ta he takes it off you know um, and when he wears the stuff he won't talk too Actually, I busted him once. I got him to talk to me. He whispered to me once. I saw him at a NAMM show about three years ago. I hadn't seen him in a while. And I saw him at a NAMM show, and he's walking with Bootsy Collins. You know, Bootsy Collins Bootsy. and him are like best buddies. Oh, that's got it. Which oh, is come so on. great. That's yes. a buddy. We need a, a film with a buddy Dude, picture. There's the reality like, show. Too. Like, yeah. Yeah. Dude, Bootsy Collins. They hang out. Bootsy loves Buckethead. Buckethead goes and stays at Bootsy's house and shit, like in oh. Cincinnati or Chicago, wherever he lives. They made records together, Bootsy and, and Buckethead. Um, I mean, there's about 300 people that love them, you know, but like, anyways, <coughs> great duo, right? Do do the odd couple on Broadway or something. You know? Absolutely, <laughs> man. Absolutely. So so I knew that they were buddies. And I would always say to Buckethead, I'm like, dude, that's so great. He, he's like, oh, man, you'd love Bootsy, man. You'd love Bootsy. Bootsy would love you, man. Oh, man, you got to hang out with Bootsy sometime. Buckethead's telling me, right? So I don't see him for years. And this is after the Guns N' Roses thing. And I'd never met Bootsy. And one time, I'm at a NAMM show. And it's like 9, it's 9 a.m., right? It's 9 a.m. NAMM show. Everyone's going in. It's a mess. And there's the Gibson guitar chicks and short shorts. And there's the old metal dudes. And there's all these people, you know, just this onslaught of freaks uh, pouring into the convention center, right? And speaking of onslaught of freaks, I see, you know, Bucketheads, whatever, six for five. I see Buckethead and Bootsy Collins. And then there's a crowd around him, man. People are taking pictures. People want to take photos. He's got he's got that white that white like kind of kabuki yeah face that mask with no expression on it. And then the bu bucket. I said, I see him. You know, people and he doesn't talk. He's in character. He'll he'll nod yes or shake his head no. You can ask me yes no questions. That's it. Because Buckethead doesn't have a voice, right? He doesn't talk. Um, and there's but I'm going oh my god and, there, and there's Buckethead man I haven't seen his ass in five years man and and he's with Bootsy Collins so I run up to him and there's all these people around I'm like dude I like lean over to him I go what's up and he like leans over to me and I'm going I'm like, I'm I'm thinking he's not gonna talk but he's like he's like hey man what's going on he goes keep you gotta meet Bootsy and he leans over to Bootsy and I'm going oh man I'm totally getting him to talk in the character right now but he's with no one else is hearing he leans over to Bootsy he's like hey Bootsy man this is my friend Josh Reed. and he was Bootsy like hey man what's going on Josh you know I'm like shit man nice to meet you but he's just such a trip man one time Buckethead was coming down to he had kind of jammed with Guns N' Roses two or three times before he kind of like got the job like he played and had a call back and came back again was he doing the whole not, not talking thing like well, when he's got the shit on yeah he, he can take it off that, and talk. Like he would come in the room and just not talk when he came out of the audition he came down without the stuff on he came he, he came out without the stuff on you know Oh man, he's so, it's just so funny to have made it. I, I, anyway, yeah, no, he's he's great. <laughs> no, long story short, he was really nervous one night. And I told my dad, I'm like, Dad, you should come up because uh, uh, you should come up and meet some of the guys tonight. Meet Axel, you know, and they, and uh, my dad had gotten in a car accident uh, a few months prior to that, and Axel had sent this really nice kind of as a as, as a nice gesture and as a joke because he's a funny dude. He's on this nice like giant expensive skateboard and signed it and, and made some joke about hey maybe you should try riding this for a while or so, you know something you know right. some joke about the right. the car and the whatever you give him this nice skateboard anyway so I said like, dad come up and meet Axel you know and, and and meet Buckethead you know he's such a huge Disney freak you know and, and Bucket knew that my dad was Mr. Disney Entertainment guy so that night Buckethead's up there and he's like man I'm 
I'm, I'm, I'm really, we were going in to do some more playing. He goes, I'm, I'm really nervous. I'm really nervous about playing tonight. And I said to him, I go, dude, I go, I go, it's all good. I think, I go, you basically got this gig. You, you wouldn't have been asked to come down a fourth time. He goes, no, 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 not so much that, but your dad's there and he hires the music at Disneyland. <laughs> Oh, I do. It was funny. Oh, you're worried about my old man that hires people out of the park. Okay, yeah. That's the that. gig you really wanted. Uh, like, don't, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, your dad did not don't offer him a job that. that night, you know? But then years ago, my dad used to go, a oh, buckethead's too out for Disney. We can't hire him. He's <laughs> way too, out. It's, it's too out, man. You know what I mean? It's too out. And, uh, and I bet you one day he does hire him out there or they figure something out. Because what happens is that <laughs> Buckethead would be playing at like, the Anaheim House of Blues which is part of downtown Disney. Yeah. And I go, oh, I'm seeing ads for your buddy Buckethead. That's so cool. He's playing the House of Blues. And uh, my dad now says to me once in a while, he goes, I don't know if he's just making conversation or what, but he's like, I got to get Bucket out, Buckethead out of here, man. We got to get Buckethead. We got to figure out a way to get Buckethead out of the park. <laughs> and I think that, you know, now that Disney is still really family oriented and it doesn't get as crazy as like Knott's Berry Farm or Universal Studios, but they get a little. They, they deck the place out for Halloween for the month of October. Like they they don't get as freaky as the other theme parks. They get pretty intense mm-hmm. with the haunted house shit, the gore mm-hmm. and stuff. But they like to have a little bit of fun with it. And I think uh, I've been thinking maybe they can have Buckethead like out front, like on a mansion with his mask on, doing some weird guitar stuff. Yo, I gotta tell you, this is this is dude. I love Buckethead, and I know we weren't we didn't come here this to, has become the to Buckethead talk about Buckethead. It, the Buckethead ever. <laughs> but uh, one of the funniest things about him and his love for Disney when I met him. I go, the first night I met him, 20-some years ago, I go, so Warren says you like, uh, you went to Disneyland. You go there often. He goes, yeah. I go, when's the last time you went there? He's like, oh, I went there on Monday. It was like, you know, two days Tuesday. ago. I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay. Shit, man, you do like it. I go, so you just, he goes, yeah, you know what I do there sometimes, man? He goes, I've recorded my own versions of the soundtracks to certain rides of me playing guitar, and I go in there with my Walkman, you know, pre-iPod, right? Going there with my Walkman or whatever, and I listen to like when I'm on Haunted Mansion, I'm listening to me playing Haunted Mansion. When I'm on Pirates of the Caribbean, <laughs> I'm hearing me playing Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm like, I'm like, shit, man. I'm like sitting there trying not to crack up. I'm like, that's cool. And I go, uh, I go, what do you do on Space Mountain, man? There's, it, you know, I was trying to like trip him up stump a little, right? The stump bucket, stump yeah. the bucket, man. What do you do on Space Mountain? He goes. Oh, uh, they don't have any. Uh, there's no theme song for that, so it's just me going off, man. It's just me soloing. <laughs> I, I just listen to me soloing. Oh my god, <laughs> he's the best. I love him. I love him. And oddly enough, I've never really been in a band with him. Like, I I introduced him to Axel, but then when he was gonna audition.